Hi, baby gorgeous! Today, I'm going to be recapping all four seasons of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake so you don't have to watch it. The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is the 10th addition to The Real Housewives portfolio on Bravo. So basically, this is just like trashy reality TV about like wealthy, successful business women who live near or around the Salt Lake City area. Before we get started, I just want to add once again that I am from Salt Lake City. This is kind of like my time to shine. I'm excited to talk about about this and let you all know what's up, what's real. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. I'm just gonna start by introducing you to all of the women on the show. So let's start out with Heather. Heather's like supposed to be the main character. She's a 38 year old divorcee and mom to three girls. She is the owner of Beauty Lab and Laser, which is really taking off in Utah. She is a FOMO, which means former Mormon, and you're gonna never hear the end of this on the series. I relate to her a lot because when the show came out, she was kind of supposed to be the main character because she was like fun and everybody related to her and she usually had the best takes on drama, but she has, guys. Like the most insane insecurity and self-worth issues, which I will explain when you understand her relationships with the other women in the group. It's like, Heather. You need to get yourself together. But other than that, like she's basically the fan favorite for I'd say seasons one and two and that changes, but we'll get there. You've probably seen her in the clip where she goes, receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, f***ing everything. Next we have Whitney who is Heather's cousin. She is 34 years old, so she's the youngest housewife. She has a skincare company that was formerly called Iris and Bow, but a lot of her story is buying out her partner and now it's Wild Rose Beauty. Whitney is married to her husband, Justin, who was formerly her boss, and then they had an affair, and then she got pregnant, so they left their spouses for each other, and that's kind of like the drama with their situation. I know people that have met her in real life, and everybody says in real life she is like a gem, like so nice, so fun to be around. In the show, she really seems sweet and nice, but she can't really get a good storyline. Like, her storyline is never entertaining, so she's constantly stirring up drama with the other girls. She's like a little yappy purse dog. She's like, did you hear Sanzo said this? Did you hear Sanzo that said that? So a lot of people don't really like her just because of that behavior. Um, but fuck all you haters. These two are like an alliance. The show is a very much about alliances. It's like war. Next we have this Jen Shaw. Now Jen Shaw is a marketer and successful businesswoman. She is Heather's best friend, or at least that's how the show portrays it, but sometimes it gets murky and I can't tell what's real and what's not. Obviously, she is currently in prison. I'm not gonna give it away too much, but she is married to the assistant coach of the University of Utah football team, my alma mater, let's go. She has two sons, and honestly, I have a hard time thinking of anything nice to say about her besides like, I guess I like her style, and she has the world's nicest husband. Sharif Shaw is like the nicest person, the most reasonable, wow, he's amazing. But other than that, she is like the worst. She's the craziest villain on reality TV. Like, we'll get into it, but she just irks me. I call them the Wonder Bread twins, okay? Because they're like the two pieces of the Wonder Bread loaf that no one wants. The butt and the bussy. Mm. Yes. Next, we have 46-year-old businesswoman Lisa Barlow. Lisa is from New York. She was raised Jewish but converted to Mormonism and went to Brigham Young University. She runs like an event planning company and a tequila company with her husband, John Barlow, and together they have two kids. Now, she is very, very, very self-involved, which is actually hilarious, and she has really funny one-liners, she has good style, she's like gorgeous. Literally everybody in the group is so obsessed with her and so jealous, so she's definitely the alpha woman of the group, and I don't really know what decided that, but like they're always like really ready to criticize her because everybody's like way jealous of her. I think she's the current fan favorite. She's definitely iconic, but um, she's very messy. Messy queen. If I give you a Chanel necklace and you choke on it, that's your problem, not mine. Somebody said her husband looks like Tony Hawk in funeral home makeup. Ooh. Now I want to introduce to you Lisa Barlow's best friend, Meredith Marks. Now Meredith Marks is a 49-year-old attorney turned jewelry designer from Chicago. She is married to her husband, Seth, and together they have three children. Now Meredith is ultra regal and put together and she uses big lawyery words like she you can tell she's a former attorney but people definitely hate her because they think she's kind of like arrogant and hoity-toity she also doesn't engage in a lot of the drama so she's not always the best tv personally she's my favorite i'm disengaging 
I am not engaged. Who's calling who a fraud? I love you, baby. Bye. Finally, I want to introduce to you Miss Mary Cosby. Mary is a 44-year-old church leader at her Pentecostal congregation. She is the granddaughter of an ultra successful businesswoman who ran the church. She had mortgage companies, she had restaurants, and she just made a crap ton of money. So she basically inherited everything from her grandma, including her grandfather. Yeah, that's right. Her grandmother in the will told Mary that she had to marry her grandfather if she wanted to inherit all the other stuff. So yes, she is married to her grandpa who is 20 years older than her step grandpa. They're not related by blood. So basically it seems like she was just like groomed really hard. So that's made her way crazy. I actually feel really bad for her. And she was my favorite character in season one because she had the craziest one-liners. She's like out of her mind, I'm obsessed. And I also felt like she was kind of poorly treated. Um, but then season two, she's like super racist. So then I felt like really like I had my foot in my mouth for standing her. So that's where I'm at with that. We'll get into it in the video. Um, oh, you have to be silent. Because I have to poop. Hold on. There is no sis. I need peace. I need quiet to, to, to fart. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. And that's what she, her talking about her makes me do. All right, bitches, let's get into the season one recap. So basically we're just getting to know these women, their families, their home lives, what they do on a day to day. So we get to see Heather running Beauty Lab. We get to see Jen constantly going to Beauty Lab. She looks fucking crazy. She's like a billboard of like, don't go to Beauty Lab. But I think they do good work. They just, their motto is like, they do whatever you want them to. So if you're like, I'm 16 and I want lips so big that I can't use them, they'll be like, period queen. After we get to experience a little taste of everybody's home life, they're brought together for this extravagant birthday party that Jen throws for Meredith. This is a $70,000 birthday party and they are not close friends. So this is just right out of the gate outrageous. Jen may makes a grand entrance at Meredith's party. The whole party is branded around Jen. There's literally like a closet called the Shaw Chalet on display. She also chooses to make it about her culture and has like a Polynesian dance and Meredith is like, all right, thanks. <laughs> and then the big T is dropped. Apparently Jen and Mary just hate each other because they were at a girl's dinner and Jen arrives and Mary says, oh, somebody smells like hospital. And Jen freaks the fuck out because apparently she has an aunt who's in the hospital and she's really struggling with that. And Mary's like, oh, I'm sorry. I just thought it smelled like hospital. And the smell of hospital is apparently a trigger to her. So I think this is probably the dumbest fight in the entire series and it runs so deep. I feel like if I had this fight with my friends, I would just be like, oh, something smells like hospital. And my friend would be like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I've just been in the hospital with my aunt. So that's probably why you smell that. And then I would be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to even say anything. What can I do for you? And then it would be over, right? That's how it would happen with most sane people, I think. Nope, this is the entire season of drama is based around this interaction blows my mind. Prior to the party, Jen and Lisa hang out and Lisa is talking to Jen about Heather and is just like, yeah, I didn't really know who she was. We don't have that deep of a relationship, but she likes to act like it's more than it was. I just remember everybody at BYU called her the good time girl, implying that she was like kind of a whore in college, which you literally can't be at BYU. So it's funny that she said that. So then Jen relays this back to Heather and Heather's pissed. So Heather shows up at the party and she just is so mad at Lisa for being dismiss it. Lisa says hi to Heather and Heather totally scuzzes Lisa off. She's like, oh, hi. Whitney wants to jump in the line of fire. So Whitney confronts Lisa because apparently Lisa with her tequila company gave a bunch of free product to Whitney. And I couldn't even follow this drama because it was so ridiculous. I think she confronted her and was like, that gift you gave me, it wasn't enough tequila. So we were like desperate. It was like that or like the bartenders made a mess. I couldn't even follow because she's never put together. She's always so drunk and confronting people. And you're like, what are you saying, Whitney? So basically it's incomprehensible drama. Mary ends up apologizing to Jen for the hospital comment and she accepts the apology. So you think it's gonna be fine, but apparently it's not because we move on to the next episode where Heather has a ski day, they go to dinner and they kind of rehash everything that happens at the party. In this episode, we learned that Meredith, the prim and proper one is separated from from her husband, Seth, but they're kind of keeping it a secret because she's very much about appearances. And also all the women are already gossiping about her. So I can understand not wanting to tell these people. After their time on the slopes, the women meet for dinner. So at dinner, 
Whitney brings up the conversation she had with Lisa about the tequila debacle. And Whitney's like, after I said that to you at the party, you threatened to expose me for being a swinger. Now this wasn't caught on camera. And Lisa's kind of like, when did I say that? That's such a crazy thing to say. I don't think you're a swinger. And then Heather jumps in and starts dishing out her grievances for Lisa being dismissive and disrespectful. And you're just watching it like, when did she say that? Like it would have been caught on cameras, wouldn't it? Like. What? So they all get into a huge screaming match at dinner. And I do think that Whitney is an unreliable narrator because one, she is such a conspiracy theorist about friends and I've heard real life things too. And two, she's always blackout drunk. So it's like, how can we trust your point of view when you're literally like anytime you confront somebody, 20 drinks in. Then they bring up a text exchange they had and they're mad at Lisa because she responded with a thumbs up emoji. And apparently that means F you and that's continues a ridiculous fight over nothing. Next episode, we get another look into Heather and Jen's friendship that is so weird to me. Heather is such a doormat, and I feel like half the time they're only hanging out so that Jen can get discounted lip filler, but who knows. Heather opens up about her divorce from her husband, and I've read her memoir, and that just sounds like her husband was such an a-hole, but I know so many other Mormon women can definitely relate to this. This is one of the few times that Jen is a good friend to Heather, and she gives her a great pep talk about like, no, it's okay that you got in a divorce. You're setting a good example example for your girls and he sucks. So you're living your best life and you're successful. Meredith is continuing to struggle through her separation and her son Brooks is taking a gap year. And I think most fans agree that he is such a pain in the ass. He's like so mean to her and he's very clearly trying to get airtime, but I digress. When my parents say all this like love stuff to each other, I find it genuinely revolting. Do you like me? Cause I love free and I love free. We get a look into Lisa's home life, which is basically like I'm perfect and everything's great. So it's kind of boring. I don't know why everybody has to say she's like a perfect Mormon woman when like she even says it herself. Like she really isn't great at going to church. She like doesn't perfectly fit the mold like everybody says. Anyway, Mary's home life is hard because she doesn't like her husband and her son is like 17 and he's just like clearly out of it, sick of her. He's totally always high as a kite. So she's having a rough time and she's actually a designer hoarder. Like her house is filled to the brim with like random garbage. I mean, expensive garbage. So after we get vignettes of everybody's life, so Jen goes over to Meredith's house and they're hanging out and Jen is way too drunk. Jen is like, has her hoo-ha out and is doing high kicks and Meredith's kids are in the living room and they get so uncomfortable. Even though they are 18 and 21, so it's not like the end of the world, Brooks has a confessional where he's like, yeah, I just can't stand Jen. She is so drunk. I don't like my mom hanging out with her and I can't believe she showed us her whole vagina. This is important for later, okay? Keep, remember this. Then Whitney's hosting a 1920s birthday party for her husband, Justin, and Meredith and Jen are supposed to have a sleepover after this event, but after the whole like vagina high kick situation, Meredith cancels on Jen because Brooks is like, I don't like you hanging out with her. So Meredith cancels. And she's like, honestly, I just need to spend more time with my kids. So I'm just, Chloe's home from college right now. That's what I got to focus on. Jen freaks the fuck out. Jen decides that she has a personal vendetta against Meredith because Meredith is friends with her sworn enemy, Mary, and turns it into this whole like conspiracy in her head. So they go to the 1920s party and Jen is mad at Mary all over again for the hospital comment. And she starts crying in the corner and all the women are sitting at the table together, including Mary, and she's mad that everybody's choosing to be friends with Mary, even though they've already cleared it up. So I'm like, what is happening? Then she screams at Meredith for canceling the sleepover because she thinks that she's now best friends with Mary and everybody tries to take turns consoling her as she's having a total dramatic meltdown. She's so angry and so drunk that she gets up and screams at Mary and says, Mary's a grandfather MF'er and I hate her. If you guys want to be friends with a grandfather MF'er, then that's your choice. Oh, with Mary, who your grandfather? Like so nasty, so mean, like that's something that's so hard for her and so personal. Like I feel so bad for this woman. She's crazy and nasty, but like that's a horrible situation for her to be in and she doesn't even like her situation. Basically, Jen gets escorted out of prohibition and Sharif has to pick her up. I don't know, by the way, if they're so rich, he picked her up in kind of just like a normal car and I'm surprised. Heather escorts her. Sharif is so pissed that she did another baby argument and we move on the next day. Meredith and Lisa, who are supposed to be really good friends, get together and. Meredith reveals that she is 
separated from Seth. Lisa chooses to make this about her and has a crying meltdown, but it's fine. Jen and Heather meet up post 1920s meltdown and they just kind of talk through the issues. And then of course, Jen brings up Meredith's secret separation to Heather within like seconds. It's like, what? This is obviously retaliation because Meredith chose to befriend Mary. So now Jen hates Meredith and Mary, but right now she kind of hates Meredith more because loyalty is like her number one thing. So she hates Meredith and is gonna spread her secret to every single person in the group. So then Mary hosts a luncheon at Valter's. It's a fancy restaurant in Salt Lake. She goes all the way out of control, spends so much money on it. All the other ladies are kind of rude about it. They're all like talking shit and I'm like, oh. Mary decides to have an activity which is a bad idea where they have to like write down things that are important to them or like things that they want to improve on and just share feelings openly with each other. And yes, Jen Shaw is here. Lisa has the funniest clip where she starts crying and talking about how much she loves self-improvement. She's so funny. And then Jen uses this time to apologize to Meredith for being a huge bitch but she doesn't apologize to Mary. So it's like, are you serious right now? Like Mary is really the one who's owed an apology because you freaked out on her like that for no reason. So Mary's pissed. She's like, seriously, you're not gonna apologize to me? And then Jen Shaw breaks down crying and she's like, you guys don't understand. The reason that I am aggressive is because I was poor growing up and I just had to be like this. And what's so weird is that everybody else buys this. Jen does this like every single time people are mad at her. She just breaks down and cries and plays the victim and almost everybody buys it every single time it blows my mind and also everybody's so scared of jen that literally nobody stands up for mary when she is the clear victim in this circumstance as a viewer i was totally gooped and gagged i felt so bad so this lunch is over we go back to seeing vignettes of home life heather's struggling with leaving the mormon church and her kids are honestly like yeah i don't really want to go back to church because they're kind of mean Meredith's husband is like, let's fix things, but you have to move to Ohio with me. And she's like, I'm not moving to fucking Ohio. You make us move like once a year and I'm just done. Lisa's son has a furry birthday party, which I thought was really funny. I mean, really it's wolves, but he's like running around growling like, I just thought it was so funny. I hope there's a clip to insert. Then they do Park City Fashion Week, and honestly, this is so boring. It's literally just a storyline of a few of the ladies walk in the show. Brooks has a tracksuit in the show. Mary and Jen sit next to each other, and Jen had this whole pep talk from her husband being like, you're gonna be the better person, you're gonna rise above it, you're gonna be friends with Mary, and it's gonna be fine. No, immediately Park City Fashion Week, she rolls her eyes and pretends she doesn't see Mary. Like, okay. We get to see Whitney's storyline, which sorry I don't talk about, but it just doesn't really interest me, so I usually skip past it. But she's really kind her dad is an addict and she's helping him recover and it's really sweet we get to see that we find out that a year ago Sharif threatened Jen with a divorce but she got medicated and she started fixing things and now they're fine and then again Jen keeps spreading the divorce rumors about Meredith like you would think that they've apologized like and made up tw two or three times by now and Jen is still spreading these rumors to everybody she's like yeah I just think that Meredith's marriage isn't perfect right now no no no, 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 I've just heard things. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. And you're like, so shady. Another thing that we see Jen Shaw struggle with is that she's very lonely because her husband being an assistant coach is always gone recruiting or doing games or whatever. And so she's very lonely. And so she's talking about her loneliness the whole season. And then we find out eight fucking episodes in that she has a 14 year old living at the house. She hires the Shaw squad, which is like 10 hair and makeup artists, people to like make her food, like random ass assistants, just so she doesn't feel lonely. Maybe if you put more time into your kid, you wouldn't need 10 people to make you not lonely. Just a thought. Then we see Seth and Meredith decide to patch things up. They're gonna move on and fix their marriage. Awesome. Whitney's dad tries to leave his sober living community and it's really hard for her and her husband to kind of put their foot down and be like, dude, you need to keep up on this. We're supporting you so hard, don't make it hard on us. We finally get to see Jen and Sharif together, which is so exciting. And she's like a different person around him. We're like, oh, okay, now we get a sweet side of Jen. This is great. Even the girls all mention that. They're like, why can't Sharif always be around? <laughs> but Whitney does her little snaky thing and she starts gossiping about Meredith's marriage feet away from her, I swear. They're like on other sides of the car and Whitney's like, hey, Heather, have you heard about da 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 da? And Heather is so, such a queen in this moment. She's like, just stop it. Just stop it. Next, we see Jen decides to throw a huge 50th birthday party for Sharif. And this is a big deal because their marriage was on the rocks a year ago and she's really self-centered. So for her to do something 
big and thoughtful for Sharif to her is like a grand gesture and it has to be perfect. She is not inviting Mary to this party. And in this franchise, if you do not invite somebody to something, it is a big deal, okay? Jen is planning this party and it's going to be the party of the year. It's at Top Golf, which is so fun. Actually, I hate Top Golf. I love the idea of Top Golf, but Top Golf, it's like bowling, but golfing. It's like all the bad parts, but I hate bowling. Anyway, then we get to meet Heather's ex and he is an asshole. She kind of explains why they got a divorce like basically she was a total pushover and would do anything that he wanted all the time which we see is totally a personality trait of hers through the series and then finally one time she picked the kids baptism to be at a certain day and he's like well my sister can't make it and she was like well i already planned it and he's like okay then do it whenever you want i'm leaving you and i was like so he's an i feel so bad for her because he sucks anyway whitney does her snaky thing where she goes to mary's house and tries to get mary's side of the story and then goes to the next person's house and tries to get their side of the story i think a lot of people do this like when you act dumb so you get both sides of the tea so you can hear this is what so-and-so thought and this is what so-and-so thought it's so fun i'm gonna get in trouble for saying that um but anyway she goes to mary's house she's like i feel so bad that nobody including myself stood up for you at that lunch that was fucked up she, she apologizes and backs her a little bit and then mary's like well i just know that everybody feels the same way and nobody likes jen shaw and everybody's too scared to say it and she's like who's been saying that to you and she's like yeah lisa and meredith have told me that they don't like Jen and they're scared of her. And that's why nobody stands up for me. So Whitney gets so elated with this information and you think she's gonna do the right thing and stand up to Jen Shaw. And she's so excited to go fix things, make things right. And then she waits until Sharif's birthday party to do anything. And you realize that her motives are not to vindicate Mary. It's really just to make Meredith and Lisa look bad because she fucking hates them. So she waits until she gets super wasted at Sharif's birthday party and goes up to Jen Shaw and she's like, hey, I need you to know because I'm a truth teller. I love the truth. I need you to know that Meredith and Lisa are talking shit about you. They said that they were scared of you to Mary. Mary Cosby told me. And Jen's like, what? One, why are you bringing this up now? And two, did they say that? And then Heather jumps in and is like, yeah, yeah. Lisa and Meredith are fake as fuck. They hate you. Jen just goes absolutely crazy. That sets her off for some reason. She's like, what is the truth? Why are you telling me that? Everybody here is so fake. And she gets up, she throws a glass, she starts screaming. Hey, hey, no. Shut the f up about Mary. Okay, okay. Shut up about Mary, I don't give a f Do you understand? She totally ruins Sharif's birthday party because mind you, she embarrasses him in front of everybody he's ever known, like players and coaches and business contacts. Like I would die. Oh, <gasps> my dog just farted. Whitney is so like, that's why they call her the wild roach. She's wild. She's, she continues on this rant too. She's like, and by the way, Meredith, Jen is telling everybody about your marriage. Just being so messy as can be so drunk. She's twerking. She's gossiping. She's crying. She's drinking. Jen storms out and I don't think her husband comes after her. Sharif is pissed at her and he's not answering her calls because he was so embarrassed by her behavior. Whitney goes and tells Mary what she did and what happened. And even Mary's like, seriously, why'd you do that at the birthday party? That's kind of tacky. <laughs> After Meredith finds out that everybody knows they were separated, she's like, hey bitches, we're actually fine, but thanks for spreading all the gossip and rumors. I really appreciate it. Jen is beyond furious at Whitney right now. So Whitney decides to patch this up. She's gonna take her to hot pots in the middle of the freaking mountains. So these three, Jen, Whitney, Heather, all go out to the middle of nowhere to these hot pots together to try and patch things up. Whitney apologizes for her timing, but she really won't apologize for bringing it up. She's like, I am a true tell her and I wanted you to know who your true friends were because Lisa and Meredith are fake and Jen's like basically she blows up again and she's like I am mad because you basically ruined my marriage Sharif isn't talking to me and I'm so lonely and you ruined my marriage and that's why I'm mad at you and I'm like okay girl you had so much agency to choose to react that way you're just out of control. She continues her rant and she gets so angry that she literally storms up out of the bathtub, splashes the producers and runs away. But then of course, Heather and Whitney are still in the tubs and Heather's like, just bow down to her. Say whatever she needs to hear. You've just got to make her happy. So then Whitney's like, okay, fine, whatever. We'll, we'll go apologize to her. Heather is such a pushover. And these three basically patch things up. It's basically fine. Then Whitney is in charge of planning a girl's trip to Las Vegas. Keep in mind that she thinks she's good on this side, but she's real scared of Lisa and Mary 
Meredith right now. So Lisa doesn't respond to her text when she reaches out about a Vegas girls trip. All of the group go besides Mary, because Mary doesn't really participate in things, and Lisa because she's pissed off at Whitney. So all the girls show up to Vegas, and suddenly Lisa's there, like, oh, I thought I'd meet up with you guys. I had business here. And so Whitney's pissed. She's like, oh, damn. She really hates me right now. So Whitney has a race car activity planned out, but Jen has a shopping event planned out for her and Heather. So it ends up being Jen and Heather go on a shopping date, and then Whitney has to face Meredith and Lisa alone, and she's so nervous because she knows that they're mad that she's tried to make them look bad in front of Jen. So she actually apologizes, and these guys are so nice. They totally accept her apology, and they're like, that's all we wanted. They have fun at race car driving, and things seem like they're fine. During Jen's weird apology shopping date, she's mad at Heather for being friends with Whitney. She's like, Heather, the only reason I don't fucking drown her is because you are standing up for her. You know how bad that looks for you to be friends with her? Because that hurts your name and image when Whitney acts out. Like actually crazy. Heather like halfway stands up for Whitney, so Jen gets so pissed. So because she doesn't get the discourse she wants from Heather, she goes down to dinner with Meredith and Lisa. And she starts talking mad shit on Whitney. And Meredith and Lisa are like, you know what? She apologized to us, so we're moving on. We don't actually care. And Jen's like, she lied on your name and you're going to accept an apology like that? What is wrong with you? She loses her mind. And she's like, so if you're willing to accept an apology that easily, it must be because you guys are lying and you actually talk shit on me. There is no doubt in my mind that they talk shit on her. Everybody talks shit, especially when you're in situations like this. Of course they did. Jen is freaking out. Meredith says, I think I'm not, I'm not engaging in the conversation. And she just gets up and leaves, which I think is so funny. A lot of people don't like that Meredith does this, but I think honestly, especially with Jen, it's the best way to put her in her place is to be like, I'm not engaging in your bullshit. I love it. I love it. Because Jen's fire is fueled off of conflict, but to just be like, pass is so funny. So then Meredith and Whitney show up and Jen is just furious. All the girls are trying to calm her down and she shoves Heather, starts calling them all nasty, nasty, mean names and just storms out. So now that Jen's gone, we have all the women together and Whitney's trying to tell them like, yeah, Jen's an asshole. Why do you guys keep letting her get away with this? And everybody's finally kind of realizing that Jen is crazy. Even Lisa is like, I legitimately do not want to be her friend anymore. And finally I'm like, yes, sense. It's okay to not be friends with people who act like that. Of course, everybody goes around the room saying things that she's done that are inexcusable. And then we get to Heather and Heather's like, well, actually she's got a lot of redeeming qualities. So I think I'm gonna stay friends with her. And everybody's like, boo, Heather. Jen tells everybody that she's left on her private jet. So Heather goes to return something to her room and then finds out that she's there. Heather actually unleashes on Jen and it's amazing. She's like, you hit me, you are so aggressive and mean. I do everything for you. And I don't understand what is happening in our relationship. Jen really doesn't take responsibility for anything. So that conversation is basically on Productive. Whitney takes the girls to energy healing, which she does every season, and it's never interesting, fun, or cool. The energy healer is totally the most like Vegas hokey bullshit. She has the girls sit in like a conversation pit and they have to go around the room and be true about their feelings, which obviously just starts a fight. Jen starts crying, talking about how like, all I know is loyalty and you bitches aren't loyal to me. You know that I would do anything for you ladies. So to not get it back is crazy. All I know is loyal. You guys are shitty friends. And then Meredith does the best thing. She just, she's quiet, she's calm. She's definitely medicated and she just pipes in like, well, I'm gonna try and do my Meredith impression. Well, for somebody that preaches about loyalty, I'm just surprised that you tell every person here my business with my marriage. And everybody's like, Ooh. She's like, okay, I'm sorry. But anyway, I'm just like this because I've always had to be like this and I value loyalty. And then the energy healer eats her up with this game. She's like, we're gonna go around the room. We're gonna play trust or not trust. I mean, what real person would ever do this? It's so hilarious. She's like, who here trusts Lisa? Everybody raises their hand. Who here trusts, they go around the room. Everybody raises their hand and says they trust each other. Then it gets to Jen and they're like, raise your hand if you trust Jen. It's silent, nobody raises their hand. And she's pissed, she gets so mad over this. So then it gets to Heather and they're like, okay, well who trusts Heather? And Jen's like, I don't. Just to like retaliate onto Heather because Heather is her total punching bag. It's so pathetic. So in spite of Heather and Jen's falling out, 
that keeps happening over and over again. Heather invites her to the opening of Beauty Lab and Laser, which is so crazy. Like it's seriously a liability to invite her. So I don't know why you would do that to your business, but she does it. She also invites her ex who is like so unimpressed. She's like desperate for her ex's approval of this opening. And he just was like, nice. Lisa and Jen start a friendship. So Meredith kind of confronts Lisa about how that's hurting her feelings. And Heather confronts Jen at her own opening. She tries to get messy and all the girls are like, don't fuck up your opening. Please don't, please don't. So they get a, like a little bit messy, but like they are able to keep it under the radar and not totally fuck up the beauty lab and laser opening. Now we're to the season one tell all. So basically this just becomes an I hate Lisa festival because these two are cousins. So they're usually in alliance and they both just agree on one thing. They hate Lisa Barlow. Everybody just talks about how much they hate Lisa. Mary is confronted by the host, Andy Cohen, about like, okay, so everybody is really alarmed by your church, by your relationship with your grandfather, by a lot of the rude shit you said. And basically she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm perfect. And that's part of the reason why she's so funny. Also, she starts being racist and she's like, my husband is white and that's why I love him. He is black, but he looks white. And that's what's cool about that. And we totally don't get along and we sleep in separate bedrooms and we are not intimate with each other, but he does buy me designer bags and at the end of the day, that's what matters. Jen basically had spent the entire season live tweeting horrible things about all the ladies. So there's definitely tension between her and basically everybody, but she really went after Meredith Sun Brooks, who's the one who made the comment about her vagina. And this just really went home for her. So she just put a vendetta against him. And some of the stuff she retweeted was so gross. Brooks is a sissy bitch. I hate the spoiled brat. Da, 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 da. Meredith is, goes mama bear, anybody would. And she just hates Jen now because of that behavior. Then Jen claims she has secret tapes of Meredith smoking and Meredith is like, I, whatever. I, yeah, I smoke every once in a while. Weird detour. Then Meredith and Mary are vindicated for the gossip about them that they were saying they were scared of Jen Shaw because Mary's like, oh yeah, I, I must have messed that up because I didn't say that. And now Whitney and Mary look super dumb. That's basically the season one tell all. Now let's get into the season two recap, baby gorgeous. Of course, we open the season just playing catch up because the reunion was really spicy and caused a lot of drama within their circle. So things are honestly really bad at the Jen Shaw household. Jen's crazy tantrums have their marriage kind of on eggshells and apparently Sharif had given her an actual divorce order at one point. I love the way he phrased it. He's like, it's me. I obviously can't be what you need me to be at this time. Very smart, because that's probably the only way that she wouldn't have killed him. But they don't get a divorce. They seek help. They're working through it. All of a sudden, Jen and Lisa, are just like best friends, which is such a slap in the face to Meredith because Jen is attacking Meredith's son and Lisa is trying to be besties. So then Lisa starts trying to meet up with Meredith and force Meredith to forgive Jen. Meredith is going through a lot and she's like, I don't even want to think about it. I don't want her near my family. She's dangerous. I just don't want to deal with it. And Lisa's like, you need to give her a chance. Also, we get the best foreshadowing. Jen says, I'd go to jail for Lisa Barlow. Then we get a new character unlocked. This is Jenny. She is supposedly Lisa's friend of 10 years and she is the new friend this season. Jenny's husband is a chiropractor. So that probably tells you everything that you need to know. Honestly, in the series, she seems like she's actually a pretty decent person, but I can tell you based on her racist, racist tweets and somebody who knows her personally, she is not it. She is, but her kids are so cute. Her kids are so cute. Jen calls and apologizes to Heather and is like, sorry, I haven't been a good friend. Let's meet up. And Heather is like, oh, seriously? Um, okay. They meet up and Heather has screenshots of Jen literally calling her the nastiest names. And basically Jen denies it. She's like, that wasn't me. She denies it and basically starts sobbing. She's like, everybody thinks that I'm making them look bad, that I'm saying bad things about them. But what do you think? How do you think my family feels about this? And it's like, how does your family feel about your tantrums or your drama? Okay. You're attacking married to the son personally, but nobody said anything about your family. Like she just makes it about like my sons. Jen will not admit to the specific screenshots that Heather has calling her Shrek, honey boo boo, all these fat jokes. She won't admit to it. She's also called her racist publicly. Jen will not admit to it, but somehow Heather accepts the apology and they're fine. I was like, 
Heather. This is embarrassing, babe. Just put your foot down, say no. You do not have to go there. I, I feel so bad for her. Anyway, the girls all go ice fishing. Meredith brings up the heinous tweets that Jen liked or posted once again. And Jen, once again, will not take accountability. Finally, she, they get her to admit that maybe that was my assistant. So it's not really my fault. Then she has some time to think about it and gets advice. So she's like, you know what? I'm gonna apologize to Brooks directly. And then maybe that will patch up my relationship with Meredith. So she goes out with Brooks and she was like, that was not me. That was my assistants. I find that hard to believe. My assistants like those and I have to take accountability because they're on my payroll, so I apologize. And basically, I didn't even know you were closeted, so now that I know you're closeted, I can see how some of those might be homophobic and scary. Nasty, half-ass apology, but they accept it and they're they're okay. They're not like friends now, but they're okay. Our next new character, Angie, is unlocked. And Angie is really good friends with Lisa and a little bit with Heather. Honestly, we don't get to know a ton about Angie except for the fact that she's like crazy rich. So she is having a benefit for her transgender child and all the housewives are invited. She is telling Lisa about this event and tells Lisa that she's going to be inviting Whitney. So that pisses Lisa off and Lisa's like, seriously? And Angie's like, yeah, I've been really becoming good friends with Whitney lately. Then really weirdly, days before the event, Angie gets a call from the catering company that they are not going to cater this event for her. And somehow Lisa is brought up in the text message. So Angie and Whitney devise a theory that Lisa texted the catering company to cancel once she found out that Whitney was gonna be invited. So these two are on a hate train against Lisa. So the event happens and Angie pulls aside Lisa and is like, I just wanna ask you, did you tamper with the catering? Lisa is like, what? No, why would you think that? And she's like, I don't know. It's just because like, you don't like Whitney. And she's like, I don't like Whitney and I don't like that you're friends with her, but I didn't touch it. Whitney enters for no reason and is like, what are you guys talking about? And everybody's like, get out. So Whitney gets so mad that she was spoken to poorly and creates even more drama. So the party basically just bursts into flames. I'm like, why would you set up this drama at a transgender benefit for this lady's child like that's really low but they move on because that's what they do basically jenny's plot for the season is that her husband really wants another child but she's had nine miscarriages and it would be unsafe for her to get pregnant again so he's like well then i want sister wives <laughs> So random, um, and that's like literally the only thing we get to know about her. Lisa finally decides it's time to make amends with Whitney and get over their past. So they go on a double date and Whitney pulls up to the location and she realizes that it's the place that was supposed to cater Angie's event. And she's like, Lisa, this is obviously you. She blows up at the table. She's like, this is a conspiracy theory. And like one of the waiters had said something about the party. So she's like, that's an actor. This is a conspiracy theory. You did the whole thing and now you're trying to clear your name. This is crazy. It's like basically so awkward because both of their husbands are there. This is a double date and the husbands are just crickets. They're like, let's calm down. So embarrassing for Whitney. They decide to just like move on, put it behind them and get through this double date. It's so awkward, I cringe. Then Jen gets audio leaked of her verbally assaulting a designer who was supposed to make her a dress for the season one reunion. It is like nasty. I'll try to insert it here because it's so gross. I've been at your house. That's why I can't do anything, correct? Okay. Do you know how many fucking nights you fucking were at my house and I was up at night with your fucking bullshit? Do you? Do you? Okay, well, guess what? Do I blame you and say, oh, it's your fault? Hey, Bravo, it's Colin's fault? Huh? It's his fault? No, it's mine! So move your shit! Then the designer posts a Wild Rose Beauty, that's Whitney's company package on his Instagram story. Lisa sees this and takes it to Jen and is like, did you see that Whitney sent PR to the designer who screwed you over? Honestly, Jen randomly doesn't have that big of a reaction to it. She's like, hmm, that's shitty, but it's like not an explosive Jen Shaw blow up. But it's obvious that Lisa is just trying to drive a wedge between Jen and Whitney again. But it is later explained that Whitney didn't send anything to him, he just bought it. So I don't know if he was trying to stir shit up or if she's lying and he did buy it, I don't know. Lisa and her husband build this company for her sons. It's like Fresh Wolf Hair Care. It's a super cute brand. Um, they do an opening event and she only invites 
Whitney and Meredith, which is so surprising. She swears up and down that her sons made the guest list and they thought they would be the least drama. So Whitney and Meredith attend this event and for some reason, a former member of Mary's church is at the event and he approaches Whitney and is like, that is a cult. You do not want to be involved with that. New conspiracy to research. So she gets really gung-ho on that. Mary has another weird luncheon and she calls everybody in to invite them, but Whitney doesn't answer the phone. So on purpose, she gives her a fake dress code because she's that mad at her for not answering the phone. <laughs> This is like the craziest overreaction. Stan Mary, because that's so psycho. So basically, Mary uses this luncheon to just attack Whitney for anything she can. I really don't understand where this is coming from, though, because like basically Whitney is Mary's only ally at this point. Like, you gotta be smart, girl. In a confessional scene, Whitney pulls out text messages from Mary and they're like paragraphs long, being like, You're a worthless piece of shit. You're such a little whore. I hate you. And it's like crazy and she totally plays it off she like almost laughs it off she's like yep that's what she said the next event is a weekend in Vail. so they meet up in the beauty lab laser parking lot and get in this van that's supposed to take them there jen arrives and then instantly she's like oh my god sharif has internal bleeding and is in the hospital i gotta go so she leaves and then about 20 minutes later they're still waiting to leave the fbi the nypd and the department of homeland security show up and they're like is jen shaw here all the girls are like, what? She just left, this is crazy. So a few minutes later, she gets taken into custody and they start seeing all the articles coming out online. Whitney's like explaining the issues and of course inventing more theories. Lisa makes it about herself and calls 10 lawyers. I'm shaking, I'm physically shaking. Then they call Meredith who's already in Vail. She got there early because she was doing a memorial for her dad who just died. So they call Meredith and they're like, sorry to interrupt. We just want to tell you what happened. They arrested Jen and she goes, I'm not surprised. And everybody's like, oh, seriously? And she's like, I saw that one coming. So the girls arrive, but Mary and Meredith are already there. So for some reason, they just don't like that they traveled separately. So they're already kind of wedged apart from these two. Everyone's talking about Jen's arrest and Meredith goes, I'm honestly not surprised because she had an employee that stole from my store and then she kept the employee on. And then she says, everybody in the group was getting sketchy messages from weird phone numbers and I hired a private investigator who said it's most likely her, but he couldn't prove it, which I'm with her. Like there's no shot that that wasn't Jen Shaw. Okay, and apparently she got, one of her charges was like encrypted text message. I don't know, but that's part of the reason she thought it checked out. Everyone kind of started out being on Meredith's side, being like, yeah, she did you wrong so many times. And then as soon as she said she hired a private investigator, everybody's like, wow, that's really fucked up. That's not what a real friend does. We all hate you. So everybody gangs up on Meredith. So basically the alliance now is Meredith and Mary. Meredith does not really like Mary, but she knows that's the only horse that's back in her right now. Conspiracy Whitney decides that Meredith is the one who called the feds on Jen because she they do the math and they're like, okay, she was the, one of the only ones who wasn't in the car when she was supposed to be arrested and she doesn't like Jen and she hired a PI, so it must be her. Like Queen, they've been following her around for years. They've been investigating her. They've been sus for years. Meredith had nothing to do with it. So then Heather vehemently defends Jen like she is a sister, even though she's ruined hundreds of lives and is such a bad person. But the women basically realize like, oh my God, one of our friends is a criminal going to jail. Who else could be suspect? So then they start looking into Mary and Whitney finally brings out like, this is what I was told. I've heard so many suspicious things about Mary. And then Lisa's like, yeah, I've heard them too, but I try to keep them under the radar. And Meredith is like, what are you guys talking about? Like, I wanna know religious trauma is one thing, but like, what do you mean? That's that's such a broad term. You need to tell me why we shouldn't be friends with Meredith. And then Lisa drops the bomb. She's like, Cameron said that he had to mortgage his house to give her $300,000 and she steals from her congregation. So everybody's like, oh, okay, that's suspicious. So they all start questioning Mary and Mary's not gonna have it. She is not okay with it. Because of this questioning, Mary decides that her new least favorite is Whitney. She just hates Whitney, even though Whitney's been there for her, like the whole time. So what she does to buy everybody's allegiance and get them to stop questioning her, she gives everybody like designer items. She gives brand new Jenny a pair of red bottoms. She gives Lisa a Chanel clutch. Like she goes all out just to get these ladies to shut up 
and be friends with her. And it's so funny because before the Chanel purse, Lisa was super suspicious of her. After the Chanel purse, she's like, she's not so bad. So the veil trip ends, it's so much drama. They get back and Jen is free to roam once again. She tries calling everybody from a new number and nobody answers and she's pissed about that. But like, I don't know how you expect them to answer if you're calling from an anonymous number. Anyway, she meets up with Heather and they're, they really bond because Heather's the only one to support her through this time. It's sad to hear her talking about like, what am I gonna do financially? My family, like that, that hurt. That was sad, I felt for her. Then Whitney and Lisa decide to go to the crater, which is such a weird activity. It's just like a dirty cave with water in it. There's not even like, it's it's so stupid. I've, I've done it before. It's like the worst activity in Park City. They rehash everything that happened in Vail and they make amends. Jenny has a pho lunch at the International Peace Gardens. It's beautiful except for the fact that Mary is so racist to Jenny. Like, I don't know where it came from, but she just hates Jenny. So nasty, says the craziest shit about her. So then Jenny, confronts her at Whitney's rebrand party. She's like, Mary, you're such an asshole. You called me the most racist fucked up things. And all the girls are like, yeah, Mary, that's gross. Why would you say that? And since Meredith is in this alliance, she's like, oh, I, I wouldn't say that, but I'm not the one to say. So then she looks like she's co-signing this behavior and it looks so bad for her. Oh my God, Meredith, that was not the right thing to say. Everybody is still convinced that Meredith and Mary called the feds on Jen. Then Meredith has a birthday party for her husband where she does not invite Jen Shaw because she really does not want to be friends with Jen Shaw after all Jen's done, which I understand. And I don't know why people don't like Meredith over that fact. Meredith's husband says, Seth is super creepy and is always talking about boobs. It's so weird. So Whitney makes him a cake with her boobs on it and he tongues it and it's so weird, oh my God. At this party, the men reveal that they got the girls a Mother's Day trip to Zion. Once again, Meredith and Mary are not traveling with the group. Jen starts bringing up how mad she is at Meredith, how she thinks she called the feds, and Lisa actually stands up for Meredith for once, but it results in Jen trying to beat the shit out of Lisa. <laughs> and Jen swears up and down that she is innocent. The girls once again side against Mary and Meredith because they didn't travel with them and they had time to develop theories and talk shit. Then at dinner, Jen screams at Meredith and Meredith is so medicated. <laughs> she is off her rocker. You don't want me to tell everyone what you've done, right? Really? You want me right? to tell what you've done, baby? Oh my God. Oh, sweetie, you have no idea what I know. No, 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 get no, out of my face and just stay out you? of my face. With charges against, my... against, against me? I heard it's just disgusting. Like charges disgusting. against you, Jen. I stopped it. Meredith is trying to tell her that I didn't call the feds and she drops the most iconic line. She says, I'm not revolting, you are. So they just like get in a whole fight, dinner ends, they storm out, whatever. Whitney has this random theory that Meredith and Jen hate each other because they both slept with the same guy at one point, which I'm pretty sure is disproven, but like, where did you find that, Whitney? Jen and Meredith make up. It's the morning and everybody's starting to be suspicious of Meredith's, about how truthful Meredith was of the dates of her father's memorial when they went to Vail, everybody's questioning it. And so that's pissing her off because this is like a fresh wound that everybody keeps picking at. So she freaks out on everybody in, in the morning at breakfast, but then they just decide to brush it off so they can go do fun activities in the day. And we think everything's fine. We're like, huh, that was a quick resolve to that. Then Whitney starts talking to everybody one-on-one -on -one and it's like, it's really suspicious that she told you one date and me another date for the memorial, isn't it? And she starts hyping everybody up. So everybody's like, yeah, she must be a liar. She must have turned Jen into the feds. Lisa's so mad at Meredith because she feels like she worked really hard to defend Meredith in the face of Jen and almost got beat up for it. But then Mary's attacking Lisa and Meredith stays silent. So she's just pissed. Everybody starts screaming at Lisa. And then this is when Lisa runs into her room. She unmikes, it's so iconic. And the mics still pick it up from outside the room. Oh, herself. I'm done with her, because I'm not a whore and I don't cheat on my husband. Her and a dumb family that poses. Why don't you own a house? Wait, you can't, because your husband changes jobs every five minutes. Oh, piece of garbage whore. I hate her, she's a whore. She's Oh my word. Like Lisa literally has a meltdown where she just goes, I am richer than all of you, so shut the fuck up. Which I don't think is true. I would do anything to know the net worths of all the women in the group. Anything. And I just want to say, when Jen Shaw has a death in her family, she gets to be a bitch for two seasons. When Meredith has a death in her family, everybody has to confront her and ask her if she was lying about it, and that's okay. So it's crazy. Whitney goes up to her one-on-one -on -one and is like, we're all suspicious that 
your dad's funeral was not when you said it was. What is the truth? And Meredith's like, I don't feel like I have to tell you that. Is this a real conversation we're having? And then Whitney just keeps poking at her, poking at her. And then she runs downstairs and she goes to Mary. And she's like, Mary, you need to be defending your friend because we're all questioning Meredith's integrity and you're not there for her. What happened to your friendship? And Mary's kind of like, this is stupid. <laughs> Whitney goes back to Meredith, just like keeps poking and prodding, being so nasty. Meredith's like, I'm done, I'm going to bed. And she just like has to get the last word in. Whitney runs up to the room that has Heather and Jen and is like, look how fun I am. Oh my God. I finally confronted Meredith about how she lied about Vale. Isn't that amazing? And of course now this unites Jen and Whitney for the foreseeable future. They are officially united. These three are good because they're all united in their hatred against Meredith. So Zion is just like drama, 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 screaming, fighting, crying. They get home from Zion and Meredith actually becomes the bigger person. She invites Whitney and Heather over for like this weird ab machine thing. It was very strange. I would love to know more about it. She invites them over and apologizes. I couldn't believe that because she is stronger than I am. I would probably block them on everything and never speak to them again, but I guess they've got like this show commitment or whatever, but then Jen is continuing to to face the financial reality of her situation. They're downsizing and they're moving and the movers are like, it's gonna cost $10,000 to move all of this. And she's freaking out. But it's funny because she'll easily spend $20,000 on other stupid shit. So the group is continuing to single out Meredith in this season. It's like crazy. I need to show you, I wish there were like a way to show you like how the alliances change every single episode. It's actually out of control. Then we're finally to the reunion tell-all. Jen Shaw is dressed like Yzma, which She's so villain core. I don't know why you would do that when you have trial coming up. It's actually terrifying. Meredith apologizes to Jen for screaming at her in Zion. She's just kind of like, I had a lot going on with my father, a nephew with mental health issues. I was fighting with my sister. My life was horrible. And Jen, I'm so impressed, accepts the apology and is like, that context really helps. After watching this season, I totally get where you were coming from. I'm so happy to accept your apology. I was like, this is amazing. Lisa brings the receipts, which vindicate her from the catering drama. Like. She she had nothing to do with it. The caterer just like had already catered a different episode that season and couldn't do it again. So now Whitney looks stupid once again. Meredith reveals that one of the reasons she was mad at Lisa is because that like Shabbat dinner that they did together was only two days after her father died. And she was just mad that Lisa didn't do a good job of reaching out. And then her only priority was to get Meredith to be friends with Jen again, instead of just focusing on Meredith grieving her loss. They make Lisa address calling Meredith a trashy garbage whore who's fucked half of New York City. And basically she cannot physically apologize her. The only thing she has to say is just like, well, you got to understand where I was coming from. And then we see a clip where she's like, Meredith, I am sorry I said that, but I only said that because somebody told me that you said my renovation was ugly. <laughs> so like she looks, Lisa looks very bad in this tell-all. She, I feel so bad for Meredith. She cannot say sorry. It's so embarrassing. And Lisa starts apologizing like a shitty high school boyfriend. She's like, well, I guess I'll just slip my wrist. What do you guys want from me? I've done it all. I've apologized. I've tried my best. Yikes. Then Sharif swoops in and Jen and him, definitely they are giving PR answers out the wazoo because they're going to trial and they don't want any of this to be used against them. So I feel like they were really sugarcoating a lot of things, but they swear that Sharif really did have internal bleeding. And when she was leaving from the beauty lab laser parking lot to the hospital is when she got in trouble. So Jen and Sharif also say that they've never had infidelity issues and they're doing as good as ever. And basically we just watched Jen and Meredith's iconic friendship come to a close, which is so sad. I hope they can fix it because they are really so bad. Eh? And then these two just kind of like scamper in and like add whatever. They, I, I honestly feel like they were kind of whatever this season. Uh, but that is all the time I have for this video. Tune in to the next video where we talk about season three and four. Thank you so much, baby gorgeous. Subscribe.